welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. My name is Ko Shukuna and I love drawing. And if you do too, then I really encourage you to do it daily or at least regularly. And here on this channel, I hope to give you a push toward your creative habit. Today we are drawing those bananas again. Can you remember that we drew them with a brush pen? The bananas are long gone, but I'm using that reference photo again. Because today I would like to practice with a dip pen. I haven't done that in quite a while. And I think um, organic shapes are really fun with a dip pen. And also all the patterns on those ripe bananas could be interesting to draw using a dip pen. So I invite you to join me and grab your ink and your dip pen. And let's explore this interesting tool. I have my sketchbook here, which is a Stillman and Burn beta series, which takes wet media really well. It has thick pages and I like it and I'm going to use it today. I have a bottle of India ink and a dip pen. And I haven't used that for quite a while, so that will be interesting and fun. The nib that I'm using on it is the G nib which is quite flexible and it keeps the ink for quite a while. So this will be a fun tool for me to work with today. But I'm not going to start with this. I'm going to start with watercolors and I will use a water brush pen for it. I know that there are really great watercolor brushes out there, but I'm just kind of hooked to the water brush pen because it's so quick and easy to use. It has bristles like a normal brush. They are synthetic and a little bit plasticky but for me it totally works and I know that there are benefits to using a real brush with soft hair and I have brushes like that and I love them but I keep just grabbing this one because it is in my daily drawing kit. The thing about the water brush is that the water is in the barrel so all I need to do is push a little bit and then out comes the water and I can dip my pen in and start painting. You do need a bit of paper tissue to go with it so you can wipe your brush. It's really great especially if you're on location. This is fantastic to combine and put in your kit. The dip pen and ink not so great for location although there are people who do it who use it on location but that's another story. Today we're at the desk painting and drawing. Let's go. Remember these bananas? I'm going to draw them again. I can use the picture for our painting and dip pen exercise. I'm taking out my watercolors. I'll start by picking, I think, a warm yellow and then see how far I get with that. And I want to pick up quite some pigment also pushing the barrel a little bit to feed the brush with water. And now I'm looking at the overall shape of the bananas again. I think I need a little bit of a brighter yellow with a banana in the back. It seems a little bit small on the page now, so I think I can actually be a little bolder here. I have more paper to use, so I can be a little bit bolder with my shapes here. And I don't need to be very accurate for this exercise. As you can see, this is basically all that I need. And now this has to dry. So now that this has dried, I can get in with my dip pen. Maybe first I just really would like to try a bit how it feels again. So I do a few marks here and yes, I think I can do this. I'll start at the end here so that I work from left to right. And so I don't smudge my lines too much while I am drawing. The color that I put down will be my guide, but I'm not actually going to let it lead me. So what I mean by that is I'm not going to trace the outline. I want to see if I can maybe use part of the outline that I made or maybe I can draw the whole shape. I have to see how it goes and what it looks like in a bit. I'm looking at my reference photo again and I'm drawing what I see again, which means that probably the color will not be aligning and that actually is on purpose because I did the color kind of sloppy and I kind of like it that way. That will make this very expressive and lively and interesting, I hope. And if not, I'm just having fun. That is, of course, the most important part. 
Now I need to decide how much of the texture of the skin I want to draw. I'm also making use of the negative space here. And now that I've drawn this, I have to be careful that I'm not smudging my line. And this is really quite different than when we worked with the brush pen. Because your tip is quite scratchy, which is very, very different from using a brush pen. But yes, it also means that you can go into more detail if you want to. And just like with the brush pen, if you're pushing a little bit harder, you can actually create quite a lot of different thicknesses, if that's a word, which is also very interesting and exciting. And like with the brush pen, if you are pushing a little bit harder, you can create a variety in line. So with more pressure, you can create a thicker line and with less pressure, a very thin one, which can be very exciting. So you can really discover all the benefits of all the different tools that you can use. And for one person, the dip pen would be like the perfect tool. And for the other, the brush pen would be their favorite. But I really think that it also depends on your mood, your subject, how much you want to challenge yourself, how much space you have if you're on location or at your desk. With the dip pen, you can make really tiny marks as well as the thicker ones. I think that if you have a variety in your strokes, that makes your drawing more expressive. And it might also show some of your handwriting, which also happens to be your style. Often people ask me, how do you find your style? How do you create a style? Well, I don't really think you do. I think you have it just like you have a handwriting and that is your style. Of course, you can develop it just like your style in the way you dress. What clothes do you wear? Do you like color? Are there certain colors you always pick that fit you well? Well, there's your style. Do you like very basic, simple clothing? Maybe that is your typical style. And the same goes for your sketchbook practice. Whether you're using a dip pen or a brush pen or any other tool, your style will be showing just like when you are wearing a skirt or pants. You will be wearing different things, but your style is still coming through because you are in it. You wear it in a certain way. And I also think that once you decide that it's okay the way you are drawing, as you are drawing, then you will become more confident as well about your style and you can start owning it. Because often we are looking at other artists and then we wish we would be as good as they are or we wish we could do the things they do. But they are on a different part of the path, you know, of the creative path. And they have learned other things than you have learned. So always think about that when you notice yourself comparing your art to others. Then remind yourself that they were beginners too once and that they might not be as great at doing other things than you are seeing them do. What I'm trying to say is that usually on social media and other places and even here on YouTube, you will see people showcase what they can do best. And that means that we don't see the failures, the so-called failures, and that they are also learning. Every artist is still learning. Even the very super accomplished ones. Artists always keep learning. And I think that is super exciting about being an artist. That you're always developing and there's always something new to see. And to learn. And to develop and to discover. So I really hope that you can embrace that. Right, back to the dip pen. I like hatching with it. It's scritchy, scratchy hatching. So I am looking at the darker bits in the photo and I'm trying to darken those by making these thin lines and hopefully I won't make a mess and instead make sense of what we're seeing. I also feel like I need to find my way through finishing this up because otherwise I will be too fiddly. And what I want to do is add a little bit of drop shadow here to finish it off. I could try a little bit of cross hatching for the drop shadow, but I'm not a big fan of cross hatching because it feels kind of inorganic somehow. So I like just going over my lines with more lines and thickening them that way. 
But this is a matter of personal taste and also of practice. I am pretty much done with my three bananas here. I'm adding just a little bit more hatching because this part is a little bit darker and it might mean that I am messing up my drawing with it. But if I don't try, I'll never know if it will work. And that is great about your sketchbook. It really is your place to practice and to play and to discover. I'm pretty happy that I picked up my dip pen again because it is such a different way of working. And I think it's quite exciting and I hope you will try it too. That was fun. I like how the color and the ink lines don't really align. It makes it really interesting to look at. I also think it's a little bit scratchy, scratchy, but that's really because I am used to um, using a bold line, like a calligraphy nib on my fountain pen or a brush pen, like we did the bananas before with. Um, so this is really interesting to see how I could make that more of my own. I probably sort of succeeded. I do like the result and I really enjoyed doing this whole drawing. Don't forget to clean your dip pen after you've used it because otherwise the ink will dry up on it and then your nib won't be um, usable again or at least it, will, it won't feel right. So I just clean it with uh, a cloth, a little bit of water on it and then just wipe off the nib and then the nib is super clean again and I can use it next time. So your assignment for this week is to use your dip pen. If you don't have a dip pen, then see if you have something else that is flowy or inky. Uh, just look in your stash of tools. I'm pretty sure you will find something that is interesting or that is challenging you to do something completely different than what you're used to. So that is your challenge for this week. If you are sharing any of your art that you do because of Draw Tip Tuesday on social media, then tag me on Instagram at Koshukuna so I can see it. I'm very curious to see what you do. Maybe it's bananas, maybe it's something different. Have fun with your color and your line. That's the main point. And of course, you can join me on Patreon. Then you can share your art on our Discord server, which is really fun. And I can give you feedback if you want to. And of course, there's many other benefits being a Patreon. I would love to have you in my community on Patreon. Check out the tiers and see if there's any that you like and maybe you want to try it out. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on my weekly Draw Tip Tuesday videos. I publish a new one every single week. So make sure you keep an eye out for the next one. I will see you very soon with another Draw Tip Tuesday. Now go and draw. Bye!